Hey what's going on everybody, it is Goalie here. Welcome back to another epic Polytopia video. This video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be watching a replay of a game that I did a couple days ago against Chris, who is a pro player for the Krakens team on Polychampions. If you don't know what any of that means, I'll leave an explanation in the description of this video. All you need to know is that he's a really good player. Okay, so here we are. So obviously it's a Chinchi mirror match, 256 tiles, dry lands. So I'm just going to let the replay run on my perspective, and I'll just kind of commentate about what I'm thinking and mistakes I make and stuff like that. So this ends up being a really close game. You'll see why later. I start by just doing some basic exploration here, although with my second warrior I send it northeast north, which probably wasn't the best direction for it. I meet Chris on turn three, and based on where he's at, I can determine that he spawned in the east corner, and I can sort of work to play around that. Now this Chinchi spawn is a little interesting. Our village density is pretty nuts. You know, we have these three villages over here that we've already revealed, and we have this one that we got two tiles away from our capital. Here's another one we just found. I get a veteran swordsman from the ruin, which isn't the best in the situation. It's going to be helpful later if I send it north and I can start to contest uh, these cities up here with that veteran swordsman, but it's going to take a long time to get up there before it's actually useful. So go ahead and grab hunting, and I'm going to use that to level up my capital, and then I'll be able to level up my second city with it as well, and take resources. Typically with Chin Chi, you go mining smithery, but I didn't really have a lot of great forge spots that weren't blocked by forest. So it basically meant that I would have to go hunting forestry in order to clear the forge spots, and then we could go smithery. Of course, with smithery, you also get the ability to train swordsmen, which... Uh, as I learned in this game, are some pretty nuts units. So I get this north city up here. I think I grab an explorer here. Yes. And we figure out that Chris already has this village north of us, which I wasn't really expecting. So initially I thought this was a big problem because Chris has this village layout here. He's going to be able to hit this city up here from about three different sides, two different sides. So it's going to be really difficult for me to hold that city. And I decide that I want to try and get border growth in that city before he gets border growth in his north city. Just because whoever gets that border growth first is going to have a lot more giant potential with these mines here. I basically wanted to prevent him from spitting out a bunch of giants in this north city. We see that he gets a veteran swordsman from a ruin as well. And he's sending it towards our capital. And I'm not too worried about that because I know that with smithery I can get a giant in our capital before he's able to siege it and win the game. So right now I'm just doing basic eco stuff, just trying to get our stars per turn going. And initially we see I'm in first place right now. I am doing pretty well in terms of score and I'm definitely ahead of him in cities at this point. So right now I have the upper hand. This is where I believe my mistakes begin. And after this game, me and Chris actually got in a call and we talked about it for like two hours or something, but what I should have been doing was applying some pressure to this north city, because what he's going to be able to do from this north city is expand outwards and grab three villages behind it, which is going to give him a very precious resource. He's going to get a lot of space by doing that. So I should have really trained a swordsman here and just sent it north to force him to deal with it, essentially. And I should have probably been doing that every turn, because if he's having to focus on me up here, he's not going to be able to expand outwards as efficiently and grab these villages, which those villages end up playing a big role later in the game, as we'll see. So he levels up his capital. He's going to get a giant on turn nine. So I get a veteran swordsman from that ruin, and that one's actually in a pretty good spot because it is two tiles away from Chris's north city here. So with that, I should probably send it north again to pressure him while this other veteran swordsman can come up here and grab this village, maybe. But I don't think I end up doing that. And we see again, I fail to train a swordsman in this city here to pressure his north city. This is the turn he gets border growth in his north city. And I'm pretty disappointed because I had planned on doing it next turn. He was just a little bit quicker, which made all the difference. So I get a ruin down here. It gives me population. So I don't need a forge in my capital to actually get a giant. So I go ahead and I get border growth in my north city anyway, just because it has some pretty insane forests. And getting control of all this area is going to be... Uh, pretty handy. Now here I do something I maybe shouldn't have. I get a giant in the north city, which I could send north, that's all well and good. But then I pop another giant, which that one definitely wasn't necessary. What I should have been doing was probably training more swordsmen and stuff, just to, again, keep pressuring. 
One thing that I failed to do this game was apply any real pressure at all. We'll get more into that later. So Chris gets a giant in the North City. Obviously, that's a big problem because it means I can't easily walk in. So I've offered him another precious resource, which is time. And that time allowed him to get border growth in his North City and a giant in his North City. Had I spammed swordsmen his way, that might not have happened. But we see here, I'm just leveling cities. And I think that's all well and good. Just trying to grow the eco a little bit for the late game battle that's going to ensue. And I do actually do a good job of actually getting some swordsmen here. And I think next turn I end up going mathematics. So here we see three of Chris's warriors just kind of like vanish into the fog. One of them moves onto this village. But he's actually moved onto three villages. And he's going to capture all three of them on turn 13. Which, like I said earlier, that gives him a lot of space to work with. Well, I say a lot. It's a lot of space in relative to what he would be working with had I, say, pressured this north city, maybe taken it from him. I didn't even have to take it. I just had to prevent him from expanding from there. He gets a catapult, so we know he has mathematics. And uh, I'm basically just trying to clean up some of his units here. Maybe force him to move his giant back. I do train one catapult. And I did happen to get this small city that had its borders reduced, which it ends up being a pretty important city. I know you wouldn't be able to tell that just by the looks of it. But uh, it has some interesting implications for the later half of the game. So Chris does a really good job here of moving his catapult behind his swordsman. It's going to force my giant to move back unless I want it to get hit. And if I move it back, he's just going to be able to siege that city. So I need to have some way of dealing with that. So I go ahead and move this catapult over, and I have swordsmen ready to break the siege if it has to happen. He also has this giant on the borders of my uh, city here. So I go ahead and move my veteran swordsman northeast. That's to try and force his catapults to take care of it rather than hitting it this city right here to siege it and i think that ends up working actually i don't think it does let's see oh no it does so he moves one of his catapults hits my veteran swordsman and kills it with the giant really quickly i just want to say if you guys are enjoying this video format let me know down in the comments below seriously oh hang on i'm about to misplay really hard right here let me get this thought out <laughs> i'm seeing your guys's comments you want me to do games against tougher opponents so i'm trying to provide that to you and I want to do it in a way where I'm able to help educate you all to get better at the game, while I also learn how to get better at the game as well. But like I said, if you like this format, tell me, please. <laughs> okay, what the heck am I doing here? I think I'm being so dang sneaky by getting a giant in this city. I think the swordsman is going to be pushed either northeast or northwest, and then I can move it north to hit his catapult. But because it is a new unit, which I was just playing, I already knew this feature existed, but I was just playing too quickly. I wasn't even thinking about it. I get the giant, it gets pushed towards the center of the map instead of where I needed to go. So now he's just going to get a free hit on this giant here with his catapult. Not a great play by me, obviously. So at this point in the game, I'm still in first place. We look at the score, it's 6,800 to 6,600. He's definitely catching up. At this point, it's becoming evident that this isn't going to be a simple, I have more cities than you, so I win sort of thing. It's going to be more of a struggle. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm kind of just trying to flood this northeast section of the map with units. I want to try and get one of these swordsmen on a mountain because I desperately need vision of this area. I have an idea of what's happening there. I'm guessing he's getting, you know, a couple of catapults, maybe a giant or two to build some sort of giant wall here to block off my units. And we see he actually gets a catapult right there. But uh, I don't have a good way of knowing that. And I just want that certainty. And also the vision to sort of play around it with knights whenever I eventually go that route. Uh, I misplay this city over here so hard. That was just bad unit placement. He's going to be able to kill that warrior with a swordsman. And I don't think I have a way to get it off if I remember right. So he's going to end up getting that city, which is going to be absolutely brutal. It gives him uh, more of a buffer to work with in these cities up here. Yeah, so Chris knocks me off this village. He lands a swordsman on the village. And I'm not going to be able to get him off of it in a turn. So he's going to end up capturing that city. We see right now he's just setting up a bunch of catapults. He's getting giants in front of them for zone of control. He's making it very difficult for me to pressure any of these cities. Because anything I move up there is just going to get annihilated. So I think at this point I go for free spirit and start working towards chivalry. Which I think is an alright play. Yeah, there's free spirit. So right now Chris's goal in the game is to secure his borders up in this region and he also wants to put as much pressure as he can in this central city right here and also pick up this city like i said this city is very important because it's sort of protecting my catapult back line right here if he takes that he's going to be able to root knights through it if i don't set up zone of control properly 
So that's going to cause me a lot more headaches if he manages to take that. I think I hold him off for a couple of turns. And we see I grab Chivalry. And there we go. We're able to knock him off. But he has a giant waiting to walk in, which is not good. So I get a couple knights down. That's all well and good. Still leveling up cities here and there, trying to build my economy. I'm making 47 stars per turn. And I'm going to peek really quickly. I want to see what Chris is making. Chris is at 46, so it's actually really even right now. I'm still in first place, though. But again, my margin is shrinking. Not that score is a really good indicator of who's actually winning a game, but it's something to keep in mind. One thing I want to point out is look at the length of the turn replays at this point. Chris is making a lot more moves to sort of optimize his unit layout and his unit positions. I'm just not doing that as much. And mainly the reason is that most of my games just don't go late game. So I don't have experience actually managing an army this large and sort of thinking like what units I need to train. This is where another one of my big misplays comes in. I get this giant down to 21 HP. Do I have roads at this point? I don't, but I can buy roads for 24 stars. Let's keep that in mind. I can buy roads for, okay, I do buy roads. So I, I literally buy roads this turn. I could have used these two knights to kill the giant he's sieging with and save this city right here. I don't do that for some reason, and I do not remember why. I link these cities down here, which I get one level. That's cool and all. Yay, a giant. I'm losing an entire city. And again, I know that city doesn't look like much, but for starters, he can level it up and take workshop and resources. So that's already three stars that he's making and I'm not. So a six star swing in total. In fact, if we go peek at his perspective really quickly, I'm at 48. He's now at 50. So he's making more than me at this point. Here, I do some very dumb movements. I let my knight just get killed, and I think the catapult gets killed as well. Maybe not this turn, but that might be next turn. I just don't uh, handle my units very well in this region for some reason, which I think I do an okay job of killing the swordsman, but uh, it's just not a good spot. So at this point in the game, I haven't really applied very much pressure. So that's given Chris space to expand to. And it's also given him time to build up his army and formulate some sort of plan to push me back. Like, I set up this catapult wall here with giants, which is nice, but I don't really have any intention of moving it forward because anything I move forward is just going to get destroyed by catapults. So I have to somehow get into his back line with a knight and take out his catapults before I do any sort of pushing. The only thing it's really doing is preventing him from pushing forward right now but he's not really pushing forward from this city over here anyway, so it's not really doing a whole lot. It's not really applying pressure. I mean, it sort of is, but he has it figured out with these catapults. It's not advancing the game state at all, is what I'm getting at. So he sieges my center city again. I'm going to be able to kill the swordsman pretty easily. Now right here, he does something really smart. He leaves one of his catapults vulnerable to try to get me to take it out. He basically baits me into it, and I, I, I take that bait, man. There I go, sending one knight in. My initial idea is that I wanted to get knights lined up in this area to maybe kill this giant and chain into the rest of these catapults. But uh, that doesn't end up working because one, I just don't have enough knights in the area. Two, he just kind of moves his catapult back and then I, I can't chain anything. So doesn't really go in my favor. So we see I go ahead and shuffle all my knights up there to basically accomplish nothing. Ooh, one other thing I wanted to point out. Hang on, let's back up a little bit. I have this catapult down here, and it's here in order to pressure this giant. But I do a really weird movement with it. There you go. Why the heck did I bring it southeast? He's got a number of options now. He can put it on this lumber hut, in which case I would have to move it onto this tile in order for it to be useful. He can simply move it back, in which case it's useless at that point. I mean, I can maybe move it forward, but he's got riders and stuff. I should have just taken the catapult and moved it, like, uh, northwest? Yeah, because I don't- that rider can't reach it at that point. And we force his giant to back up, essentially. By putting it northwest, we cover a lot more useful area with our catapult, rather than putting it here, which literally gives us coverage on this one tile. And we see here, he just moves his giant back. No big deal. Which, if I had put my catapult on this forest tile, like I planned to, he wouldn't have been able to put his giant there. I mean, he could have, but it would have been hit by a catapult, and then a swordsman would have said hello. Not a great trade. And we see Chris is just still micro-optimizing his army to deal with mine. 
and I actually end up roading my catapults over here. So that's another mistake I made is not moving my units optimally, which this is why I say slow down, guys. If I had just slowed down my play, I would have moved these catapults on useful tiles. I would have prevented the siege in this city right here with the knights. Because I was playing real quickly, I didn't do that, which obviously playing quickly results in mistakes. And this game is pretty clear evidence of that. Chris has still not made any real mistakes, in my opinion. At least nothing jumps out at me like the glaring things that I've done in this game. So I start to build up a bunch of knights in this area. I'm trying to put pressure on this city, and I also want to start putting pressure on this city. Those are what I've identified as the weak points of this map layout. Because I can hit this city from here, and I can hit this city from here. Which, if I had still had this city, it would have been even better. But alas, I am a fool. Now something interesting happened on that turn. He moved his catapult line back. I forget why he did that, but it allows me to move mine forward by a tile. Did I have some kind of chain I wasn't seeing? But yes, like I said, that allows me to move mine forward by a tile. And I make the decision here to siege his city. That's probably not a good idea, because that city produces like, maybe... I can't tell what level it is, and you can't check in the replay. It's like maybe five or six stars a turn, and I'm sieging it with an eight star unit, which he's going to kill very easily. So it's just not a great trade. Ooh, here, we see an actual mistake from Chris. Let's back up. He leaves a very small chain in this north city here, the one that was previously mine. He has a 17 HP giant, a catapult, and a rider. I'm able to move two knights over and take advantage of that. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot for me, but it at least pressures him, which is something that I've not done a whole lot this game. But he easily breaks the siege with just a shot from a catapult, and it maybe forces him to rethink how he's got his stuff laid out here. But uh, yeah, that was like his one mistake, I think. <laughs> Dude is nuts. Now this is something that I want to point out. Later in the game, population cap in cities becomes a big problem. I was unable to train any units in this city. And that's a city that I need to have units in every turn in order to actually stand a chance at holding some of this territory up here. So what I could have done is disbanded some of my useless units and maybe trained a swordsman there or something. Maybe even a knight. I wasn't exactly looking at how his units were laid out, but unit composition is another thing I want to touch on here in a bit. Okay, I believe it was this turn. This is a turn that we talked about for maybe... 40 minutes in our voice call, maybe 30 minutes. He asked me a very simple question, which is why can I not throw all my units at this west city? Which he agreed that this was probably the city that I should have been focusing on. So I was correct in that regard. But he asked me why I couldn't just throw all my units at this city and take it. And I mean, I recognized that trying to assault the city was not going to work. So I never tried it. I knew that it was a bad idea. I just couldn't figure out why. And whenever he asked me that question, I, I had to sit there for a minute because I, I genuinely did not know the answer. So the answer is that most of these units that I have here are pretty useless. And we broke it down a little bit. My giant here is useless because if I get it near the city, the catapult's going to hit it. And I can't road it next to the city because he has his giant on this mountain for zone of control. So I would have to move it forward. It would get hit by the catapult and the giant. And then I would move it forward again. It would get hit by the catapult and the giant would kill it. This swordsman on a mountain, I can't get it near that city. This swordsman is you know, kind of threatening that city, but he just has to not train a unit there and it doesn't matter. The catapults, I have this catapult here, which is going to be able to hit his giant on the mountain. That's fine. But these other two down here, what are they doing? This one isn't covering any useful area. It's got this line here, which I mean, there's a seven HP swordsman in it. I can just use this swordsman and kill it. This catapult, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know why he's there. I don't know who invited him. I hate him. The reason why I couldn't just throw all my units at the city is because most of them were just slow, which means he had extremely ample time to react to whatever I was doing. It was slow. It was awkward. It was clunky. What I should have done was get a couple of knights over here. This catapult isn't necessary. What if I have a knight here instead? Now, all of a sudden, if I take out that swordsman, I'm sort of threatening this region right here, which he has this giant here for zone of control, but it's definitely better pressure. I have a knight, but it's not enough. So when you break it down, I think I'm applying pressure here, but it's sort of like a fake form of pressure. When you really break it down, I'm not threatening the city at all right now. At least not threatening a siege. How about that? So once again, this gives him time to react. This gives him time to build up a push against me. This gives him plenty of time to maneuver his units where they need to go. 
Okay, let's keep watching. I make the decision to kill this giant on the mountain, which I don't really know if that's the play. I mean, it's a dead giant. Giants are limited. But I mean, with Chin Chi, you can pump out so many that just killing one isn't really a huge deal. Basically, this game, I relied on Chris making mistakes, which he made one mistake that I was able to get a three unit chain on. That was about it. Aside from that, it was basically just me sitting there hoping he would slip up some unit positions or something. Which, with a player as good as Chris, you know, that, that doesn't happen too often. So yeah, in these next few turns, the game starts to get pretty darn spicy. Chris has still established that the center city is my weak point, and he's absolutely right. He goes in and goes for this kill on my giant, which I actually think doesn't work. I think he miscalculated. Yes, it lives at 5 HP. So, I mean, that's another small mistake. But I'll go ahead and give you a, a little peek at Chris's side here. Look at all these knights. Oh, man. He's got these knights up in this area, and they are ready to wreak havoc. So I think I end up disbanding the giant for five stars. Yep, there it goes. And then I just scoot this one over. I get archery for the defense bonus for this giant here and this one over here. Just trying to sort of provide a better wall against uh, Chris's knights that I know are coming, basically. Which, unfortunately, this wall is kind of built on sand. It's not going to work very well, basically. I keep pressuring this west city, hoping to get something done. Nothing happens. So this is where things go bad. Remember when I said this small city right here is very important? What did he just do? He opens up a lane through that city to start attacking this giant on the mountain right here. And I believe he manages to kill it, and he gets to kill this catapult right here. So he takes out that swordsman that's Zona controlling this tile. And he comes in, hits the giant. And this other knight comes in, takes him out, chains the kata. Not a great time. I forget, does he also kill one of these giants? Yes, it looks like it. So he kills that giant, takes out the catapult, and also gets a nice hit on my giant here. So at this point, he has determined that the, enough time has passed. He's built up enough troops in the fog over here to basically launch a big ol' attack on my center city. Just like he planned. And it works flawlessly, which I'm going to be able to unsiege, but I basically have no units and no control in this area anymore without the catapults. And uh, I don't have enough knights to really repel all the giants that are going to be coming into here. So at this point, I do the big baby thing and I go ahead and hit the resign button just because I don't want to waste his time anymore. And there you go. Yes, guys, I lost a match. Happens a lot more than you think. And I'll go ahead and show off Chris's side at the end here. So this game should have been basically a slam dunk for me. The problem is I did two things wrong. I gave Chris time and I gave Chris space. Time allowed him to, well, obviously, he had a chance to actually set up some sort of way to repel my attack, which I didn't even end up attacking him. So the space actually gave him the room he needed to set up this attack. If I would have pressured this North City here with a whole bunch of swordsmen and prevented him from maybe getting these three cities right here, this game would have definitely gone a lot differently, I think. I mean, at that point, he's just not making the economy to properly repel my attack. Uh, next thing I want to touch on, army composition. Your units are really important. If a unit isn't doing its job, just disband it and train one that will. You know, there's no sense getting population locked in important cities with <laughs> a useless catapult that's doing nothing. So that's definitely a thing to keep in mind as well. Next thing is... Play slowly, of course. You'll make less mistakes. You know, plan out how you want to move each turn. Plan out what you're going to spend your stars on. This is something that I say time and time again, and I didn't follow it here. And that's part of the reason why I lost. But yeah, overall, it was a really great game, and I'm glad it happened. I learned a whole lot from it, and I can't wait to apply this to my future games as well. Let me know if you enjoyed this video format. I know it was more educational rather than funny haha -ha meme video. I don't know. I feel like these videos are a lot more... Um, valuable to you guys rather than a random multiplayer match where I win on turn seven because my opponent's not doing anything or something, which I'm still going to do random multiplayer match videos because it's fun to just sort of like goof around with the game. But these videos where we examine why these games have the outcome that they do, it's a great learning experience and it's a great way to sort of like you learn a lot from it. You can apply it to your future games and you'll get better at the game. 
One more thing I want to point out, like I said, this game is from the Poly Champions Discord server. It is a competitive league for Polytopia. It is team-based. If you have not joined it already and you are either good at the game or are looking to get better at the game, I highly recommend joining it. You will not make a better decision in your Polytopia career. So I'll link the Discord server down in the description of this video. Be sure to check it out. Seriously. So yeah, I hope you all did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe for more epic Polytopia videos. If you want to support me and the channel directly, you can become a channel member by hitting the join button down below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a spectacular day.